we have a brand new EdgeCam mill part in a milling session. We're going to start by opening a solid model. And the solid model we're loading is mostly round concentric surfaces. And so EdgeCam guesses, oh, maybe you want to do turning as your first setup. The environment is turning and the work plane indicator is a visual clue. Well, no, I actually want to do milling on this part as my first setup. So I can easily say I'm doing milling. The parts reoriented. We can see that from both the environment and the visual clue of the work coordinate system indicator. And then from here, the setup window allows some quick tools that reveal the rectangular volume of the part, allow us to quickly change the work coordinate system origin, and allow us to quickly change the part orientation, such as here, I want to rotate at 90 degrees, choose a material, then using the rectangular volume of the part set model sizes where any extra amount is by default evenly split, but I can adjust any direction that I want, in this case, a specific amount above the part, everything else below. And then using the supplied stock size, quickly pick a fixture from our fixture database. Very quick to get started with the virtual cam setup due to some technology in edge cam. Some of that technology is visible when you go to File and Preferences, and then in the Preferences command, go to the Solids tab and look at the Workflow Alignment Options box. Now, by default, these are all on and they're taking effect. Let's turn them off. We'll get back to what they do later. But with them all off, when I go to dump this file simply by starting a new part, not saving changes, and then I go to reload that same solid model. The model now lands in a different orientation. First, it stays milling, but it also lands in an orientation that isn't quite right for my setup. There's no effort to try to change it from where it was modeled in CAD. That's the key point. It's left as modeled in CAD. Well, no big deal. We can quickly flip the part around the x-axis and then I could go and use the work coordinate system indicators to set the zero where I want it to be, and then continue with virtual cam setup. While that's possible, we're gonna explore some other ideas as well. So when we look at the auto alignment preferences, when these are all off, the model is loaded directly as done in CAD. And we wanna show some reasons that you might want to do that in some cases. We'll close this edge cam session without saving the part. And we moving now into Hexagon's designer, which is used in this case for model prep. We have a machining assembly that's been developed here. We have the finished part. Now that finished part also contains some work coordinate systems, some of which can be used in the machining and in the cam process. There's a stock. If I turn off the display of the part, you can see the stock, which is currently set as semi-transparent. It's been previously machined. And then we have the fixture that's used during this process in our horizontal machining center. And that fixture also includes a work plane that's used to assemble the fixture to our CNC machine. So with all of the options turned on, we're going to go ahead and take advantage of designer's ability to label different items. And we'll start by saying, we're going to go ahead and identify the finished part we're manufacturing. We'll select the solid in response to the prompt and finish. Now, when we do that, PMI is added. We see the PMI flag. Well, let's continue with the stock now. So notice right now, no PMI, but then we'll say I'm making stock. It's this item here. It is a manufactured item. Finish. And once we finish, the PMI data is now visible. Let's now move to the fixture and similar, tag it as a fixture. It's a purchased item in this case. We'll select all the items with a quick window. After finishing, again, PMI data, then we'll end the command. So we have just added some data that's going to speed up our CAM process. And we'll then go ahead and send this to CAM. Yes, I want to save the part. We'll use the existing name and we'll pass this to the CAM system of our choosing, EdgeCAM in this case. 
What this does is it instantly fires up an edge cam session and the part is immediately loaded. And keep in mind with auto preferences disabled, the part lands in edge cam exactly the same way it was oriented in CAD. And since I had intentionally aligned it in CAD the way I wanted to, it's there, coupled with the work planes from CAD as well. And the fixture and stock items that we labeled in designer are automatically picked up in my cam session. So I have nothing further I have to do. At this point, I can simply go to finish creating a machining sequence. So we're going to choose one of our horizontal machining centers. It's out in my shop. When I get to the second phase of the sequence dialog, I'm going to choose from the work planes that came over from Designer, which work plane is my zero system for my part and which work plane is assembled to the machine. We'll check update stock real quick. That looks great and we'll continue. When I look from a top camera, which looks from ceiling toward floor, we see that the setup is correct for a horizontal machining center. The pallet is located on the table and we're ready to create toolpath. This was very, very fast to do using the machining assembly from CAD. Well, what I want to do now is jump back to Designer and I want to export just the finished part as a unique file and look at some aspects of model orientation using this. You can see in the part with it isolated that there are several work planes. When we go to save this part as a unique part, we're going to choose the part and then choose the work plane reference to use. And I'm going to go choose a work plane called Absolute. Now the Absolute work plane, as we spin the model a little bit to give you an idea, the Absolute work plane is the one down back behind the part. So basically the part's kind of in the middle of nowhere from a perspective of our machining setup. We'll give this exported file a unique name. And then we're going to return back to EdgeCam. And I'm going to open that solid as a brand new cam session. We'll open that new solid that I just exported. When that model lands, I want you to pay attention that we're in a mill orientation still, but the part's a long way from the origin because it's exactly as it was built in CAD. And that's the point of the preferences and auto alignment. When the preferences are off, the model is loaded as it was in CAD. Now, CAD designers will build a model at a place that's convenient for them, and they should. But what do these do? The Select Environment option gives EdgeCam permission to analyze the part and decide whether the first setup is likely to be turning or milling. That determination is made based on whether the part is mostly round and concentric surfaces, and if so, guess turning, otherwise guess milling. A line for turning doesn't expose anything new, pretty simple, does a great job of that, is covered in a previous tech tip. But a line for milling, now we've got some options. Initial datum is used for top if most of your work or the majority is vertical machining center, where if the majority is horizontal machining center, you might want to choose front. Again, easy to take apart and change it from different orientations. Alignment axis I have set to X because the X axis is the axis with the most travel in my machines. So I want the long edge of the part there and my preferences for where datum should be set. You can tailor this and this will often help in the initial model orientation being a good spot. The point isn't to guess correct all the time. It's just to lay the part in in a good starting orientation. So if I start a new file to dump that, and then I go open the same file now that the preferences for auto alignment are enabled. We'll notice that now the model lands with EdgeCam guessing turning. Oh, reasonable, but nope, I'm going to use milling. As soon as I choose milling, the part is reoriented with the flat edge parallel to the x axis, exactly like our preferences asked for. Now, at this point, I want to show something to watch out for, and that is really check to make sure your work coordinate system origin is where you think it is. This part is a part where it's a round part with a flat. And when I go and use IntelliSnap and hover over the circular face, we can see the position where the X is centered, but the Y actually is not. 
the y-axis is off center. How did this happen? Well, if I use fit stock to help illustrate that, and I make stock that's exactly the rectangular size of the part, and we look straight down at it, you can see that the condition is a round part intersected by a flat, and the mid volume of that is not the same place as the center of the round turned components. So we undo the stock. How do we solve this? Very easily. We go to the work plane area of the setup window, and using pick datum, we can go snap a coordinate from the part and use that as our datum. Now, as you approach faces, we can see different snap points in gray. It may not show up well on the video, but you'll definitely see that on your own workstations. And I want to get to the snap zone at the middle of the part. And so to hold that there, I'm going to hold down the F key on the keyboard, which freezes that snap position. And then when I approach it with the cursor, all the other ones disappear. So I know I'm locked in on it. I can left click. And while you don't see the part move, and certainly in the video, when I now hover over position, now X and Y are both zero at the center of that face. Perfect. That's exactly what we want. Z is also zero. Whether you use IntelliSnap or whether maybe you prefer to verify entities and choose the faces and put the data into the feedback window, we really encourage you to make sure that your part is where you think it is before you create your sequence and create toolpath. Now I want to show a final piece of technology here for orienting more tricky parts. So we'll just close this part, load a new one, and this new setup is a casting or forging, a finished part, and several solids for the fixture. And because there are a lot of solids, EdgeCam isn't sure which one to use as the part. We could get the model into the correct orientation for our setup by using the options in the setup window or by using commands like translate, which moves, or rotate, which rotates, to get the part into orientation. But I want to introduce you to the easiest way to get this done using the align component command. Align component gives us the ability to have three levels of orientation capability for parts. So the first one asks us for a face to define the XY plane. And this is really asking for which face should be used to rotate the model so it's perpendicular with the z-axis of our work plane. So when I choose the top face, it becomes perpendicular, but the wrong way. I could pick the face again, and you'll notice that prompt has stayed the same, which is EdgeCam's way of telling you, I'll stay here until you tell me you're done. So I'll pick the opposite face, because I know they're parallel, and bang, we're good to go. The part is sitting down on the machine table facing the z-axis of my work plane. So now I'll finish and go to the second stage, which prompts for a linear edge to define the work plane. And this is asking for a linear edge that will be used to be parallel to X. So if I go to a top view to illustrate this, I can now move my cursor over one of the linear edges of my part. And when I left click to choose that edge, however many degrees of rotation is needed, the model is rotated so that edge lines up to X. And I can continue to click on that edge or others to change the orientation from here. That's why it continues to stay at this stage of the command. When I'm ready to proceed, then I can go ahead and finish. And now the third prompt deals with the origin. What coordinate from the model would I like to be the origin? Well, with this part, I've got a fixture in stock I need to deal with. So I'm actually going to just finish the command and jump out of it at the third stage. So kind of almost canceling for a moment and then going and saying, OK, this model is my stock. Then I'll hide the stock layer. I'll also use the select to hide function to, to pick one of the faces in the model and say hide it. And everything left is fixture, so it'll make it super fast to just choose those items. Now I can turn on all the layers, use the fixture display. And this will help show you that this situation is one where we've got previous machining that's machined the bottom face of the part. And I want to use the center hub and the face to be where my work coordinate system is located. So I can jump back into a line component and resume the command. First stage is already good, so I'll finish. Any stage that's good, you can skip.
Second stage is already good. So I'm going to finish that one as well. And now that brings me to the origin stage. So as I go to a, select a location on the part to grab the origin from, when I approach the face, there is a globe. If I rotate the view a little bit, it'll be easier to see. I'm going to hold the F key, trick we showed before. Hold the F key, freezes the input. Then I'll position the cursor over the snap and go grab it. And whatever distance is needed, the whole assembly is moved as a unit, as a group. To be at R0, and I can go confirm with IntelliSnap that the part is where I think it is. Great. When I turn the display of items back on, I can now very quickly proceed with creating the sequence and finishing my virtual cam setup. I'll select the five axis machining center to use and then complete the virtual cam setup. From here, we can move forward with tool path creation, and it was very easy to handle this moderately complex part using a line component. Do you have questions on this or other topics? Please contact us to discuss. We would love to hear from you. Mm -hmm.